Okay, uh, thanks very much. So I've got too many slides, not enough time, and I, I'm scared of Leila, so I'm going to have to hurry up. Um, so a question, perhaps, for the microbiologists in, in the audience. You know, in a world of rising antimicrobial resistance, is culture-based diagnosis fit for purpose? Uh, I clearly don't think it is. It's just way too slow. Okay, so why is rising resistance and bad diagnostics getting in, us into trouble? Uh, here's a couple of examples. So we've got urinary tract infections. Uh, here we have, uh, we used to use trimethoprim. Now trimethoprim, the resistance rates have risen to uh, 30 to 40%. So, uh, because we don't have good diagnostics, we've got to replace our first-line therapy. So we've moved from, from trimethoprim to nitrofurantoin, but that's not as good an antibiotic. Uh, there's some toxicity issues. The same is true for gonorrhea. So gonorrhea, we used to use Cipro, again, ciprofloxacin. Resistance rates have risen up to 30 to 40 percent, and now we have replaced that with uh, cephalosporins, and they're not as good at treating uh, oral uh, gonorrhea. So if we had good uh, 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 diagnostics, we could use trimethoprim or Cipro, those older, better drugs, we could use them in 60 to 70% of cases. And I don't know about you guys, but you know, when I go down to the STI clinic with a nasty case of gonorrhea, I uh, certainly want the best drug available for me. Um, so... This is why, you know, I would suggest uh, metagenomic sequencing is the way forward. So, you know, you can detect bacterial, viral, fungal pathogens all in one test. You've heard about this, all this today. You can detect antibiotic resistance markers. You can detect, uh, you can look for at the epidemiology uh, of disease. You can look at infection control, transmission, virulence. This is all in one test. And it will also allow the use of narrow spectrum agents and the development and trial of narrow spectrum agents, which in my opinion is key to in the fight against AMR and antimicrobial resistance. So why nanopore sequencing? Well, it's fast, and we all know that. It's real-time analysis. We've heard about that all day. Long reads, yeah, we've all heard about that. Why is that important to me? Well, it gives me some context for some of the AMR genes that I look at, especially the chromosomal ones and it will improve um, uh, complex metagenomic assemblies. Um, and of course, I like the rapid innovation in the company, and I think we all know that there, there are uh, companies in the genomics field who seem to become devoid of any form of uh, innovation. Um, so, um, Valtrax, Flangel, etc., these are all really good. And of course, uh, nanopore sequencing is just really cool. Um, so, Hospital-acquired pneumonia is the application that I'm working on most at the moment. Uh, HAP, or hospital-acquired pneumonia, is a respiratory infection uh, that develops more than two days after you have entered the hospital. So about 200,000 patients every year in the UK get it, and, that, and that's similar stat for, for the US uh, in terms of, not in terms of numbers, but in terms of percentages, around 1.5% of inpatients in any country in the world get hospital-acquired pneumonia. And I guess, anecdotally, most people know somebody who's gone to hospital, often an elderly relative, who's gone in with something non-infectious, and all of a sudden, they're sick with pneumonia. So... Um, HAP, or hospital-acquired pneumonia, that, that occurs when you're on a ventilator is called VAP, or ventilator-associated pneumonia. Uh, the mortality rates are really high, 25 to 50%, and that increases because of bad diagnostics. If you've got an, a drug-resistant strain, your chance of dying is, you know, 75%, and that's, you know, really bad. So, um, if you look at HAP, VAP, uh, and how, how much it costs, you know, every event costs, on average, across the world, it's more expensive in the States, costs you between 30 and 37,000 US dollars. So if we had better diagnostics in place, we could, we could reduce that cost significantly. Okay, so the INHALE study, what is it? So this is, this is what we're doing. This is what, how we're, we're testing um, rapid metagenomics and some PCR tests. So we've got a five-year INHALE uh, NIHR-funded program to look at the rapid diagnostics of HAP. Um, it's a diagnostic evaluation study followed by a randomized 
controlled trial of the best of the diagnostics that we look at. Uh, we're going to look at the impact the, the diagnostics have on antimicrobial stewardship and on patient outcomes. Um, we look at two commercial PCR-based tests, rapid kind of sample in, answer out tests, and we will uh, look also at targeted and shotgun metagenomic sequencing. So these are the two PCR tests, and I won't talk about these today, but one is uh, the Curitis Univero test here. It takes about six hours, two samples at a time. Second one's the Biofar Film Array, this here, and it takes about an hour, uh, one sample at a time. Uh, both very simple to use. Um, so to validate these tests, these panel-based PCR tests, we thought we needed a, um, an alternative method to look and find out whether these things are working well or not. So we decided we would use 16S RDNA sequencing or metagenomics, as some people call it, but I know people here don't like that. So, um, you know, we, we looked at that and we decided we'd do some proof of concept and we, we did some 16S uh, sequencing on these uh, respiratory samples and we find that it works really nicely. You get a good breakdown of what's in the sample. These ones on the left uh, are infected patients. You can see the community diversity starts to disappear from the sample and you get a dominant pathogen showing Pseudomonas denitrophomonas klebsiella. On the right, these two samples are normal respiratory flora samples, so you can see there's much more diversity and no obvious pathogen. The weakness of this approach is that you only have genus level identification, so you can't get below the genus. And in this case, that would be, that would be risky because you would look, there's streptococcus, that could be streptococcus pneumonia, and you wouldn't really be able to tell with 16S. Now also, it doesn't give you any information on antimicrobial resistance, so that's, they're the weakness of, this, of the 16S approach. And because of those weaknesses, we decided uh, shock and metagenomics might be a great uh, tool in this, um, in this disease. So um, we got token talks for Nanopore and asked them would they, would they like to get involved in the study. And they've been very kind and supported us. And now they've joined the study and we're going to do the fir a world first uh, rapid, uh, sorry, clinical evaluation of rapid metagenomics for the diagnosis of infection, in this case, HAP, or hospital-acquired pneumonia. So we've developed a pipeline, just like everybody else, and we uh, use a depletion strategy at the start of the pipeline, and that's extremely important. If we don't use that depletion strategy, uh, we don't get good results. We get way too many human reads. We spend too long sequencing. <coughs> So we have a, a depletion strategy to begin with. It, it gets rid of somewhere around 10 to the 4 to 10 to the 5 um, uh, um, uh, of, of the human DNA. So, so it removes around that. Um, library preparation, we use a, the rapid low input kit. Uh, it's a transposon-based library preparation kit, and you use long-range PCR. Uh, you can, we, we, in our hands, we get somewhere between about 10 and 100 picograms we can start with and uh, still get a decent result. And we get about three, up to three million, so somewhere between one and three million reads with an average length of between two and three KB uh, for each run that we do. So in that particular pipeline t takes about eight hours. So uh, that's from sample to result. So... You deplete the human DNA, takes an hour. You do the DNA extraction, takes about 40 minutes. Library preparation, about four hours. Two hours of sequencing, and then we use uh, Albacore base calling, WIMP and ARMA from the epitome uh, pipeline. So that's about eight hours, as I mentioned. So this is just to, to kind of illustrate the depletion of the human DNA. So here you can see we've run a human DNA assay and this is the undepleted sample here, you can see, and it's got a CT in the, in, in the low 20s. And this is the depleted sample. The CT is in the uh, high 30s, and there's a, a delta CT of about 15, so we have about 10 to the five-fold depletion in that particular sample. You can see if you do a 16S bacterial assay in the same sample, and, and you test depleted and undepleted samples, you get no difference between the two, meaning the bacteria have remained unchanged and not depleted, which is what we're after. If you take a sample like that and you sequence it, <coughs> you get the vast majority of reads <coughs> are classified. 
And some unclassified reads, some of these are just low quality reads, and some of them are human reads. And you get this kind of a result. So Enterobacter aerogens is the pathogen. There's also some Staphylococcus in there, and potentially some E. coli. But that could be bad informatics, mix up between Enterobacter and E. coli, perhaps some contamination, who knows. So we, started, we did a pilot study. Uh, we took 42 samples. Uh, of patients with suspected bacterial pneumonia, and uh, we, th those samples came from sputum, bowel, endotracheal tube aspirates, three different types of samples, the most commonly used samples uh, taken for the diagnosis of HAP. Uh, then um, we depleted the human DNA, we put one to six uh, samples per flow cell, and that around $120 per sample that costs us. So these are the results. And so what you just need to take home is that green is good, red is bad, uh, orange is okay, we're not too worried about additional detections uh, by, by minion, and the gray is just not, not detected by either method. So you see, you'll see a couple of reds, and you'll see mostly green and orange. So if we look at um, the, uh, so, oh sorry, I missed so, so the minion was 89% concordant for the detection of pathogens in HAP samples compared to culture. So you see here, you know, you've got a H influenza here, uh, microbiology detected H influenza, that's a green. So 89% concordance, that's quite good. It's very good, actually. So if we move on to the next slide, then we decided we'd better optimize this method. Eight hours was a little bit long and uh, we weren't sure if we were using the right uh, DNA extraction method for difficult to lyse organisms, uh, you know, like Aspergillus and Staphorus and those kind of things. So we introduced bead beating. And we weren't sure it could be used be bead beating because in previous kits, you know, bead beating, uh, nano Oxford nanopore sequencing kits, bead beating was kind of not its friend. So, so we, we, we introduced bead beating and we still got very good results. So, we streamlined the enrichment procedure to reduce the time. We reduced the PCR elongation step from six minutes to four minutes. We optimized the cycle number for uh, low input samples, and we looked into fresh versus frozen. Uh, did that make a difference? You know, 20, freezing at minus 20 versus minus 80, would that make a difference? And, and, and some kind of preservatives that would help bacteria survive uh, the freezing process. So I won't go into the results from all that, but just to show you that extension time makes a difference. Six minute extension gives you average read length of 3.3 uh, kb. Uh, and if we re reduce that down to four minutes, it's now down to 2.7 kb on average. Uh, there's no difference in the uh, quality. So we were willing to take that reduction in overall length uh, to speed up the process significantly. So, um, this is what the streamlined process looked like. 45 minutes for human DNA depletion, 40 minutes for DNA extraction, 2.5 hours library preparation, an hour or two for sequencing, and again, analysis. So just under six hours or even less sometimes. So these are the results, and these are inhale results. So these are from the clinical trial, and what we're seeing is um, a set of results from uh, my university, and on the next slide, we'll have a set of results from our partners down in London. So again, red is bad. And what you're seeing here is these first five samples were frozen, uh, freeze-thawed samples. And what you see is H influenza. We obviously have a problem when we freeze-thaw samples that contain H influenza. We lose it in our process, probably in our depletion process. So that's not ideal. So but in real life, you would never freeze a sample. You would never take a sample from a patient, stick it in the freezer at minus 80, come back and thaw it again, and then do your diagnostic. It's not going to happen. So it's, it's not a real world problem. So we're not worried about these. So you can see we got a few missed detections here apart from those frozen ones. And if you look at the results that came from uh, UCL, University College London, um, you see they got, some, they got good results, one, one missed sample. Overall, uh, Minion was 92% concordant with standard microbiology for the de detection of pathogens in HAPVAP uh, samples in the inhale study, so far tested. Um, we excluded the frozen uh, samples from that analysis, 
and we use cutoffs. We, use, we have to apply cutoffs to get rid of contamination and uh, 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 crosstalk with barcodes and things like that. So we put a like 0.5% of the reads, we, we get rid of anything below that, and then we, we do Q score cutoffs for our alignments uh, using WIMP. So just to mention, I haven't talked at all about resistance, but um, you know, that, that would take a whole other, other talk. So in, in, the, in three samples that contained bacteria that had acquired resistance, they were all E. coli, uh, Minion detected the expected resistance genes in those samples. Um, so just to summarize, uh, metagenomic diagnosis of hospital-acquired pneumonia is feasible, it works. Sample preparation is really important. You know, it, it just speeds everything up and it makes things faster, uh, sorry, cheaper. Um, Real-time uh, pathogen ID and resistance marker detection is possible and we get very good concordance with culture. And we can use this approach, you know, to to modify empiric antimicrobial therapy before second dose instead of waiting two or three days as is the current situation. Uh, just to acknowledge those people, uh, they've all worked hard on this and uh, thank you. Okay, thanks, Justin. Um, I think we probably just about have time for one quick question from the floor now and then we'll have more time in the Q&A afterwards, so you can either save up your questions to ask or please do post them on the app for the general Q&A afterwards. I think we have a question down here, thanks. Uh, what's the basis for your depletion? So we use saponin. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's differential lysis. So we lyse human cells and we deplete their DNA using DNAs or nucleases. So then you just, you just spin down the sample and collect the bacteria. Okay. And then you, you extract from those. Gotcha. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you very much, Justin. We'll come back to the other questions later on in the panel.